All right, everyone. Last looks. Quiet on set. Roll sound. Sound speed. Roll camera. Camera speed. Scene one, take one. Mark it. And action. Hi, I'm Ed, the host of Savannah on Film, and we explore the economic and cultural impact and values of the film industry in Savannah through conversations with people who work in the industry in related fields. You can find us here on WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with global soul. Good afternoon, Savannah. How are you? Welcome to another episode of Savannah on Film. Our purpose here is to explore the economic and cultural impact and values of the film industry in Savannah through conversations with people who work in the industry and related fields. We are here on WRUU 107.5 FM LP, Savannah Soundings, Community Radio with Global Soul. And before we kick off the show with our guest today, which I'm going to give an intro to, I want to send a very, very special shout out to my best friend in the world, my wife. Today is our three-year wedding anniversary, so Cheryl, happy anniversary, and on with the show. So our guest today is Seth F. Johnson. Welcome, Seth. Yeah, uh, thank you, and uh, congratulations, Ed, and thank you for having me today. Thank you for agreeing to be on here. Yeah, for sure. Know. But anyhow, let's just start with a little intro about you, Spike, yeah. and we'll get into that sure. <laughs> in a minute. <laughs> so let's see. Seth is a unit stills photographer on many movies that were filmed in Savannah, plus he is a writer and director of his own film shorts, a male model in New York City. You know, I had to throw that in there oh, when yeah? I saw of that in your, in, in your bio. I love it. But uh, Seth always has a megawatt smile and friendly manner about himself that puts others at ease. I first met Seth on the set of Galveston, which was primarily filmed in various Savannah locations. And he's joining us today on Savannah on Film. And once again, welcome, Seth. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to talk about a few of your accomplishments, and we're going to go through your filmography here. Cool. Yeah, great. Okay, and, and anything else you want to chit-chat about. Awesome. And um, we're going to start with, talk to me about Moon Rabbit Media. Yeah, awesome. Cool. So uh, um, what we are is kind of we're a, um, a group of all different filmmakers that, um, you know, most of us have actually been working together kind of off and on since we were all at SCAD. And so, you know, a lot of us, we teamed up maybe back around like 2013, 2014, and have kind of just mm -hmm. continued to bring people on. And then now, of course, that we've all graduated and we're working in the industry, we found other, you know, cool, interesting, creative types to kind of come and help us. And so um, the idea is that we are, uh, we're going to make short films and we're going to get our own work out there um, while we're working on the, you know, the feature films and the television shows there uh, in the Savannah area as well. So. One of the things, the projects that I, I think you're wrapping on, and you can, you can of course, give me more information uh -huh. on that, is the visual poetry oh, thing that okay. you're doing. Can you talk about that? Yeah, for sure, of course. Yeah, so that was um, uh, that was actually kind of a um, kind of a um, a quick little creative project that we put together, and so. Um, a friend of mine, she had this idea, this kind of this message that she wanted to get out there. And um, and so she, she wrote this uh, visual poem. And so we kind of, um, you know, started thinking about what sorts of uh, visuals and, and things would kind of uh, 
be, I guess, most appropriate to accompany that. Mm-hmm. And so it, it's a, a thing that it does, you know, it deals a lot with like, you know, some internal struggle and making decisions and things like that. And, uh, you know, I guess she could probably speak more on, you know, kind right. of where the heart of the project came exactly. from. But, you know, I uh, we shot it and uh, yeah, it's really, really cool. And so we're kind of finishing that one up. And so that would be a smaller one that we've done, but we've also done much bigger, um, you know, like true kind of short films as well. So, okay. Yeah. Can you talk about those? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'd love to. Go um, ahead. Go ahead. So I'll tell you about some of our past ones and I can actually tell you about one that we're working on right now if you want sure, to hear about it. Sure, sure. Yeah, so um, we have um, the first one that we kind of did as a group, which I think was really interesting. It was uh, um, our senior thesis film and it was called One Traveler Too Many. Okay. And uh, it's a really funny idea. Um, it was uh, set in like eight, 1995 and it's about these two gentlemen these young guys who have been drinking um absinthe you know the kind of crazy per- water okay so uh, they're drinking water yes well well it's yeah yeah there you go yeah <laughs> how about that yeah. so funny um and so they um they you know it's kind of known for having these crazy pop properties and this whole story about the green fairy this mysterious uh, this mysterious fairy that will come and visit you okay. um if you've drank it and so they uh they get in this carriage and they have kind of this crazy comedic um, kind of like a screwball comedy um, carriage ride and we did the whole thing in seven minutes and we actually had a uh, a horse covered carriage come down from Atlanta because it's funny you might not expect this but in Savannah there are not that many um, you know not non-convertible carriages I don't know what those are called but I'm, the- I'm thinking of Transpo <laughs> and getting in that uh, here to Savannah yeah yeah so it was it was really crazy but that was the first one that we did and then one that we um and that one was, did really well, and it was a lot of fun. Um, and then another one that we did um, not too long after graduating, it was called uh, Death of a Dream. And this mm. one was a much kind of more serious subject matter. Um, and it was a, about a love triangle that takes place on this tiny little um, sailboat. And so it was really kind of an interesting idea. Um, uh, it's a drama, and it ends in uh, the, the disappearance of one of our three passengers, and then they have to try and track back and see what happened and, and what led to the disaster. Interesting. Yeah, so um, it's super cool. That one, actually, just uh, we played uh, um, a couple of weeks back. We just played at the Atlanta um, Shorts Fest, so we were just up oh, there. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh well, cool. an- another thing that you're involved with, or your family is at least, mm-hmm. is the encryption escape. Uh huh. I think it's your family owns that business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is that uh-huh, correct? That's correct? Yeah. And where's that located at? Uh, so that's on uh, it's on 31 uh, Montgomery Street. It's right next to the Rail Pub, uh, right downtown Savannah. And um, what it is is it's an escape room. Uh, and so for any of our listeners who've never heard of this, it's going to sound crazy, but basically. Uh, uh, we'll put you in a room for an hour, and there's all these clues, puzzles, <laughs> mysteries, all these crazy different things you have to try and solve and uh, figure out, and they go along with the different themes that we have. So we have uh, the, the first room, and probably our entry-level one is our, um, our pirate-themed uh, room. It's called Shanghai Savannah, the Pirates of Pembroke. Um, and so it's the Pirates of Pembroke. The Pirates of Pembroke. Yeah, we gotta gotta go with that local flair. Um, and so uh, that one is our first one. And then we have another one. Um, it's called Lights Out at the Museum, Art with a Twist. Um, this one you're trying to escape from an art museum. Uh, and the craziest thing, the crazy thing about it is, is that the longer you play in there, uh, the darker it gets. So that's kind of cool. And then we just opened another one, which is our Zeta, Eta, Beta. And that's our, or Zeta, Eta, Zeta, sorry. And that is our um, kind of haunted, mysterious, uh, sorority, runaway bride, kind of a whole crazy story with that one. So, And that's our hardest room. So it's a lot of fun. Wow, that sounds interesting. Yeah, Adam. it's cool. If you're claustrophobic, is that a problem? Um, no, not really. Uh, you know, sometimes people will be concerned about that, but um, you know, I'm I'm not exactly sure what I guess like the the dimensions would be with of of the rooms would be, but they're mm-hmm. not small rooms. Um, and so like our our lobby area, when people are in the lobby, we always say it's not going to be any smaller than this. So we have people that are maybe a little nervous about getting in a tight space, and they they're normally pretty comfortable. Well, you, so. I noticed uh, from looking at the website there uh-huh. that you had a, a lot of different difficulties whether physical or otherwise you know you you rate them which Uh is which is a good thing so you know if you are maybe a little bit more of a fraidy cat you Uh might you might choose one of the other ones versus another one you know a scare factor and all but sounds very interesting I, i have to give that a try sometime i haven't Done yeah, that. yeah um, definitely. And we do we do market them all as being very family friendly too. Like we don't do like I guess so many of like the like I know some companies will do like the the, the zombie stuff like that. Right. All of our stuff. We get a lot of corporate groups that come through. A That's lot of sports awesome. teams. So yeah, it's really fun. Cool. Yeah. One thing you also are on Seth F. I can never say that Seth 
F. Johnson. Uh -huh. Unit stills and photography on Facebook, so people can follow you uh -huh. there, correct? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, unit stills photographer, yeah. Okay, and... Before, we're going to get into the question of what that is, okay, okay? Yeah, right, in, right. in a minute. But let, we we can kind of do this. We're going to riff on some of your things that you've done here, and yeah. I'm, I'm going to turn back the clock as we do here. We're going to look by things that you've done. Okay, mm -hmm. your first yeah, thing sure. is, and I guess we need to talk about a unit stills photography. Mm -hmm. Let's just go ahead and, and get that out yeah, there. Of course. What is that? How is that different than photography? Yeah, sure. So um, you know, this is uh, one of those kind of very, um, I guess, industry specific jobs that you don't hear a lot about um, when you think about film and you know film and television. Um, you know, of course, you think about uh, you know your cameras and your sound and your actors, but um, somebody you know needs to be there to. Um, you know, create those movie posters, the magazine articles, right. the stuff that you're going to see online. And so that's what I do is basically I'm on set and uh, I'm taking the, the photographs that are going to be used for all of the marketing materials, essentially. Um, and then also it kind of documents the film, too. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, as we know, some films will turn out to be really important and people will look back at them for, you know, years and years. years and and years. so those those images can can reveal a lot you know down the road you know sometimes you'll you'll look at those things and you'll see you know you can learn so much from looking at a still photograph of a of an older film it's it's super interesting so that's Excellent. yeah so that's one thing that really interests me but in summary yeah we're basically we're shooting kind of the market marketing materials yeah and and, and you've done a lot on several films and we'll yeah. we'll get to some of those and some um very important ones that were filmed here mm -hmm. well let's just start there with in the camera and electrical department uh -huh. Let's see. We'll go back in time here. I'm kind of switching up my format a little bit. Sure, but, sure. Um, you were a DIT, digital image technician. Uh -huh. Define that real quick for those who may not know. For, so for that show that you're actually talking about. That's um, Southern Charm Savannah. Uh -huh, yeah. So that was yeah. Southern Charm Savannah. So um, on that one, kind of an interesting thing is uh, basically we were still shooting on tape on that one, which is oh, kind, wow. kind of a quirky thing. Um, and so and I guess, that, you know, it's pretty common for reality television. And so mm -hmm. I was basically just doing the, the, the media management on okay. that one. And then I also kind of would jump in as a, a as an assistant AC um, when we had our bigger camera days, like if we had a big party right. or something on set. Um, I would come and help out, but yeah, definitely that's not my focus. But I, that's I, not your focus. I, that's yeah. just your, I'm just kind of going going up the um, sure, calendar sure. here in, in that particular yeah. genre of things. You did Love on the Shore. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was in 2017, and this mm -hmm. was also in 2017. Mm -hmm. Love at the Shore, the TV movie where you were still photographer there. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. Is it stills or still? I, it goes either way. Either I, I way. say still, okay. still photographer or okay. still photographer. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Because uh, some people or, go, still photographer, he just stands there. A unit photographer. <laughs> no. But mo unit most of the time, if somebody's yelling at me, at me on set, they're saying stills. Just stills. Stills, uh -huh, yeah. Okay. Stills, get out of the way. <laughs> so if you can talk, if you can jump in, if, if, you, if you're able to talk about any of these, are there any unique experiences you could share with us oh about yeah sure they're um we'll uh, start with love at the shore how about that yeah i'm trying to think of some specifics on that one um, anything quirky anything challenging i can i can stills? think of some general things for you i don't know about specific shows so much i mean i maybe something might jump out at me but okay there's there's a lot of stuff that you know a lot of people don't think about with um with this um like what well like uh for example like lots of different actors they'll have um you know, different things in their contracts that say like, oh, you know, if I'm going to be um, doing like a poster image, for example, um, mm -hmm. that, you know, they, they'll reserve the, the larger, um, you know, their larger films or ones that they're personally financing. They'll say, okay, for that one, I'm going to hold a gun. But on the other ones, just shoot me just normal, like just something on set. So if it's something that maybe right. it's like a really exciting image, they'll save that for mm -hmm. the ones that they're financing themselves. And so there's a lot of different things like that um, that end up kind of coming down the line, which is kind of an interesting thing from a, a marketing standpoint okay. um you know other things just working with the actors you know a lot of times actors have preferences whether you're looking to shoot them um during the actual live takes you know while we're recording um mm -hmm. if they would like to be photographed during that um or some they prefer just the rehearsals um you know it kind of depends either way you get in a real tricky situation when you have one actor that says only shoot me during the rehearsals and then you have another actor wow. that says only shoot me during the takes and then they're in a scene together <laughs> right then you just kind of have to uh hide and get what you can <laughs> i've got a story of uh, bo bridges on galveston when we get to that just a quick observation i uh -huh. made then so we had love of the shore in 2017 you were a busy individual Mm -hmm. You did In Search of Liberty, mm -hmm. the behind the scenes, still photographer on that mm -hmm. in 2017. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Any sure. insight? What was that about? Uh, so, uh, yeah, so that was in Search of Liberty. That was kind of like a, um, I, I guess it was kind of like a children's film, but it was also kind of a kind of like a semi-political film as well. Um, and that one um, was the one that actually got me into um, the union. So that's what got okay. me into, you know, ICG, um, you know, Inter- International um, Cinematographers Guild uh, Local 600. And so that's you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna do um, still photography on you know larger you know um, I guess kind of bigger budget or more professional sets, you, mm-hmm. you're gonna want to have that um, union representation. So I had already been pursuing that. Um, that okay. was already something that was definitely kind of looking. But that at. one sealed the deal for yeah, you. Yeah, it did. Yeah, exactly. So I was really really happy because that's had had. Um, uh, things turn out def- differently. I definitely was going to go and talk to them regardless, but that show ended up flipping, and so I was able to get um, brought on um, for what I wanted to do, so that's great. 2017 is such a long time ago, right? Well, that that one actually... that It's true. This is when they came out, uh-huh, so exactly, that was probably yeah. filmed... It was 2016, summer 2016. Yeah, so <laughs> that is true with all, all the dates that I'm, I'm reading here. This is I'm reading the dates when they right. were available yeah, yeah. for consumption. Yeah. Also in 2017, you were still photographer in six episodes of Living the Dream TV series, uh-huh. uh, Snake in the Grass, Blink Test, <laughs> uh, Krakatoa, yeah. True Love Waits, Gators for Cougars, mm-hmm. and is that six? I missed one somewhere. Okay. But um, trust me, you were there. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Oh, um, I was. <laughs> what, what was that experience like working on living the dream it was super fun um that was a great show um so kind of what the the idea was so that was for uh sky uh sky network sky tv uh and that was um it was a, a comedy series and it was about this british family that they're over here um you know in the states and they decide that they want to buy like a trailer park like an rv park okay and they end up uh like running it managing it renting it out and it's all the crazy adventures and we had a lot of um you know ex pro wrestlers and things on set it was it was a lot of can fun can you say who uh, so we had kevin nash he was okay, uh, okay. Well, you know he was our big dude he oh, was wrestling our wrestling fans out uh, there yeah uh, exactly wrestling yeah. fans yeah exactly exactly for <laughs> sure so that was super super cool and of course he's been in savannah a couple times he's down here for uh, the the magic mike uh, xxl a couple you know a few years back yeah so. i got cut from that show you didn't have the extra scenes on that no <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah yeah i'm joking i'm joking <laughs> so funny. but um yeah we had him and then uh, we had um our uh, Krakatoa was a uh, uh, buff uh, bag Bagwell, so he was super okay. super cool. He's a lot of fun. But, I love yeah. that name. Yeah, Buff Bagwell. Buff Bagwell. Yeah, that was awesome. Awesome. But yeah, lots of lots of crazy adventures on that one. That was a really fun show. Um, we had a really great Halloween episode that was uh, just amazing costumes. We had like vampire people. Um, wow. Yeah, it was it was it was really fun. You did in 2018 Beast of Burden mm. with Daniel Radcliffe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Daniel Radcliffe and Grace yeah. Gomer. Uh, yeah, it was really really cool. That's for those who don't know. That's Harry Potter. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a pretty um, uh, interesting show. It was uh, you know like I guess maybe two thirds of the film were shot in the the cockpit of a of a little Cessna, and so we had a couple different. Wow planes that we were using um for the show one of which we ended up crashing we dropped, did, dropped did you do the crane. still for the actual po- the uh-huh. poster for it because that i thought that was one of your most impressive ones yeah. I, I did i did like that just the detail and yeah and all yeah. that and there was awesome I, I just thought you did a a really cool job yeah that. So, thank you yeah that, so how was it like working with daniel radcliffe and uh, the rest of the crew amazing yeah he was uh extremely talented uh incredibly nice a very very kind person he was looking out for the whole crew too like he was always thinking of things and kind of helping everybody out i guess one one, one time they were doing um some stunts and you know i'm always looking for a, a good angle you know a good position to kind of lock up in and, and 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 be able to get my shots without getting in the way and right and he just came over and he was just so polite and he was like hey i'm actually going to be shooting my like blank rounds in your direction so you wow. might want to watch out. Take pictures and duck. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, he, um, I mean, they could ask him to do anything and he was there a hundred percent every time. So very cool. From being in the sound department on a lot of films, I know sound's supposed to be kind of out of the way, you know, you're, you're that quiet thing. And I think it's kind of the same for unit stills yeah, for photographers. Sure. Yeah, you, definitely. You, you just have to kind of blend in because you certainly don't want to wreck the scene or, yeah, or yeah. you know, or after the scene because actors may be preparing for their, that next scene or the next setup or the next take or whatever. Mm-hmm. So um, have you ever had a challenging time where 
you were almost stuck in a scene. Uh, is there any? <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I, I think that maybe uh, a rookie mistake. Or something. Sure, sure. Yeah, um, you know, one thing that can be particularly challenging is any time that we're doing kind of like uh, study cam stuff like that. That uh-huh. can that can be a little tricky because there's just so many moving parts. Um, right. For stuff like that. Also with um, stunt work, a lot of times those are going to be really really interesting images that um, definitely, you know, we've talked about and said, okay, we we want to grab some some stills of that um but yeah it, it, there is definitely a challenge with it you know still photographers um there's kind of this uh it's there's the joke and there's kind of a reputation for um you know getting in the way and stuff mm-hmm. like that but i i haven't really had much of that i think maybe a couple times i've found myself in a reflection or, or something like that but i've always just jumped right out of the way but yeah i try, I try to be super super mindful um of it i, I think right. one thing that maybe um is a little interesting kind of with my background is that, you know, I, I, I actually, you know, I did go to um, film school. So I, st- I studied film and television. So I, I didn't right. come from a photography program and I didn't work as a, like a journalist or something like you that. You attended so. SCAD. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so I went to okay. Savannah College of Art and Design here locally, which is super exciting. But yeah, so I, I had the film background and even before I had gone to film school, I had um, going out and been a stand-in and an extra and stuff on a bunch of older movies. I was on the Blind Side as a football oh, player. Were you? Okay. I was a, a stand-in on the. You were you side. were a uh, Biff. What's his name? Oh yeah, you know <laughs> I, player. I actually walked right up to our you know our main guy on that one. Didn't even realize who he was. I thought he was just another football player because he was wearing a. Uh, Wearing, uh, you know, the uniform just like me. And then I found out that he was, you know, number one on the call sheet. (laughs) That brings me up. uh, And that's in 2018 when that's released. Galveston was the next one. And I remember you talking about walking up to a star. First day on set there, Mm -hmm. first day on a professional set for me. And I end up going for for breakfast there. um, Uh And I sit down right next to the director, Melanie, and a, uh-huh. such a such a nice person, and, and she's a French director, and yeah. a wonderful movie, a great experience, I'll, I'll never forget it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I was supposed to sit down and talk to her, but I, I struck up a conversation. I'm, I'm a conversational kind of person, so yeah, sure, she, she's sure. very nice, but... I learned on there, I kind of cut my teeth on that movie, you know, uh-huh. just as an intern, but I was learning about sound and, and, and gone places since there. Mm-hmm. I wanted to tell you real quick, I do remember you, we were inside of a dry cleaner mm-hmm. filming oh. and Bo Bridges, I think you were about to take a picture of me, uh-huh. kind of put his hand up. He's like, not like from this side. Or I can't remember exactly what he said, but the story was something to the effect that... I know actors can be, they have, if they're in a certain or come out of a powerful scene, sometimes it's hard to get sure, them, sure. you know, where you want them. And you probably, have you ever seen things? And what I, th- I think I'm getting at here is, have you ever seen a shot and missed it just because you wanted to get it, but, you know, it's rolling or, or something happened that you just couldn't and you're just like, could I have captured that? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, you know, as a still photographer, we want every shot. So we exactly. always want to be there, you know, um, and really, truly, you know, you want to you want to capture every single moment. You know, a lot of times I'll leave these shows and I'll have maybe 20,000 images by the end. Wow. So, yeah, it's yeah. So it's you know, it's it's definitely kind of high volume photography. You want to get as much as you can. But yeah, totally. There there have definitely, I, you know, I can't maybe think of some specific examples, but sometimes, you know, the space is too tight and you just don't get to get in there. Right. And then other times, you know, maybe it'll be a closed set because they, you know, they want to have really time to, to, to focus or maybe it's really emotional. So mm-hmm. yeah, definitely it happens. You know, you try and get what you can, but yeah. Okay. We're hearing some strange noises, you know. Um, Adam before us was talking about haunted savannah, so maybe that's oh, yeah. something going on there <laughs> in the city. Some... But uh, everyone's welcome to our our show here. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, yeah, Galveston was a wonderful experience for all of us. And uh, also coming out in twenty eight, and the rest of these are all twenty eighteen. So uh-huh, I mean. You, yeah. You're up and down the line here. Your calendar is totally full with yeah, premieres. Sure. You're probably going to premiere after oh, yeah. premiere, <laughs> yeah. you know. And and uh, you <laughs> maybe had maybe not yet, <laughs> not yet. Yeah, but you're gonna, you're gonna be. Yeah, you're gonna sure, be. sure. The Beach House TV movie. Um, uh-huh. You were an additional still photographer on that. One. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. That's right. uh, what was the experience like that for Beach House? Oh, uh, fun, super fun. You know, I uh, that was Hallmark, wasn't it? Uh-huh, yeah, that was Hallmark, Hallmark and so was uh, Love at the Shore. Those were both both mm-hmm. uh, Hallmark movies. But right. yeah, those are those are great shows. Um, you know, anytime you're you're working on the beach all day or at a beach house, that's uh, that's a fun time. So yeah, it's definitely great, uh, great, uh, great sets. I, I like those a lot. Um, hopefully, they'll come and do some more here. 
We also had um, Mr. Mercedes TV series. You did one episode of Still Photographer. Yeah. Episode 2.2. 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the, so. The, um, yeah, I went up and did that one. Uh, actually, just kind of as a, a favor for somebody, I ran up there and, and, and shot. Um, somebody was out of town, and so I was kind of filling in. But uh, that one was uh, up in South Carolina. And, yes, uh, super cool from what I saw. I don't want to say too much about that one because it's okay. uh, not even come out. There's still, I think okay. they just wrapped a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, by all means, please, if there's any NDAs and you can't say anything, sure. then there's no comment yeah. you know, or whatever. Or we'll move right along. In L.A. Minute, a behind the scenes and still photographer on that mm-hmm. one, and that's completed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, and I actually just got the um, I just got the poster image for it, too, which was super cool. So... Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a really interesting show. Um, they, uh, they've been trying to get it together for a while, you know, like trying to get the show off the ground. And I think they, they thought of the script a while back. Um, and it's an interesting thing. You know, it's about an author kind of um, who's already found success. And then he meets this performance artist and she's an up and comer. And it's all, I guess, about being like a genuine artist. And uh, mm-hmm. he sees her maybe... Um, kind of transitioning more into the mainstream and you know he's trying to to make sure that that she doesn't do that and and of, of course I'm talking about um it would be uh, Gabriel Byrne uh, Gabriel Byrne he's, he's okay. our main guy and then also Kiersey Clemens was our our lead actress so really really cool like, extremely talented the both of them um yeah I mean usual sp- suspects so that's pretty cool <laughs> that's, that that's a great connection to have yeah 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 um, and this was a, another film in 2018, still photographer. Mm-hmm. You got to work on Peanut Butter Falcon. Yes. How was that? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Besides the obvious that we all know. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, I actually I loved um, working on the Peanut Butter Falcon. Um, it was just uh, anytime that things are happening live and you're capturing like what is like a 100% genuine, authentic experience. I mean, that's mm-hmm. so exciting. You know, yes. it's so cool. And and you see it all the time, you know, it, it just with, you know, with the, the takes that you get from film whenever you're shooting, even when we're working on our short films, you know, they always say, you know, when things, um, unexpected things happen or something goes wrong or maybe an actor knocks something over on set, kind of, that's where you can get some of your magic. And th- this film was just so organic. I mean, we were... There was really? all sorts of interesting, cool things happening. We see a cool angle, we'd run out and we'd shoot it. Um, the the first day I was on, I I realized kind of what an adventure I was in for because you know a lot of these shows when it starts raining, everybody you know they huddle up and they go under their tents and and you just kind of wait. But this one, um, you know, they were they were out there, you know, in in rain and in the dirt wow. and in the mud and just they were just there, being troopers there to capture a story for sure. It was cool. That's awesome. Yeah, Killer Man. Mm-hmm. 2018 post it's in post production now correct um, uh yeah yeah they should be there and probably hard what was that experience like uh intense intense so this one was uh that's a comedy right <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right so uh yeah this uh um was a, a super super cool 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 show um it was kind of like a crime thriller deal and uh, very stylized and gritty and violent and just going to be uh incredible um and it had some uh, some some really cool uh, cast members too. Our um, our uh, uh, lead actor was Liam Hemsworth, um, which is kind of funny because I actually had worked with him in the past. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. I had, okay. Just keep rolling. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So I had actually worked with him um, years ago when I was oh, kind of just getting interested in this stuff. I was a stand-in on um, the last song down here. Right. That that movie they did with uh, Miley Cyrus and all of them, and um, and so he was um, our our main guy, you know, and I was actually his stand-in for a little bit, and so. Um, uh, yeah, I, you know, here we are like eight, I guess eight years later and, uh, mm-hmm. he's down here in Savannah. And so, you know, I introduced myself as the still photographer and, and I could tell that maybe he thought he knew me or something like that. And I said, yeah, I said, I just have to tell you, I said, we actually worked together. Um, and that was, I believe the first show he had done in the States too. So, wow. but he totally remembered me and it was awesome. And yeah, I just, I got some great images um, from that one. You know, I think it's uh, always was, good to see a familiar face. Was he intense? Yeah, yeah, but he was in a, in a, in a great way. You know, he's so he's a really really cool guy. You got to work with Ra's Al Ghul. <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> For those Batman fans out there, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So um, Backtrace twenty eighteen. It's in post production. Uh huh. Yeah. Also stills on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we shot that one back in February. Um, and uh, um, yeah, that was another kind of an action movie. 
Uh, it was uh, super fun. Uh, definitely one of those shows where you're wearing earplugs a lot and, uh, you know, eye protection because we're doing lots of uh, gunfire and all kinds of crazy stuff like that. We were in a in a, um, a cement factory for oh, a wow. lot of the show. So very dusty and dirty and crazy. And, yeah, it's uh, uh, really, really cool. Um, and, you know, we're working with uh, um, uh, Sylvester Stallone on that one, too. So that was really, really What fun. was it like working with Rocky? Yeah, um, uh, incredible. Well, uh, you know, I have a, a lot of family um, up in Philly, so they were very happy about that. They were they were kind of oh freaking my gosh. out. Gosh, you've made it. That, was that when you officially made yeah, it? Yeah, there them? you go. That's oh my god, one. you've been in the same. Yeah, taking pictures of Rocky. <laughs> no, but yeah, he was he was great. Total pro. Um, you know, um, we were on a really um, kind of advanced schedule on that one. We had to get a lot done in a very short period of time, and so you know, we're always looking for those images that are going to be used for um, our key art or like our posters and kind of those those main things that we're going to be putting out there and so when he would kind of see me or sense me mm-hmm. he would he, i mean he made it work you know he would he would definitely um find some some cool uh poses and things for me you know I'll, you know some cool. of them you know some of these actors uh, the really cool thing that they do which is great for me um is if they if they sense me or they see me they'll they'll give me a couple images and i can bam 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 take my shots and then just get out of the way and and, and give them all the space that they need so he was definitely one that was 100 percent down for that which is great that's awesome yeah. now what can you say about emperor it's uh i think just rap filming mm-hmm. correct yeah yeah, um, yeah. Can you say anything about it? Uh, you know, I'm not. I, I haven't been. If you can't, don't. Well, I mean, yeah. it's it's going to be a really exciting show, and it's a, a, um, a pre Civil War going to be really interesting. I think it tells a, a really um, important story. Right. Um, but yeah, I'd have to check and see what's all uh, listed on the IMDb before I say too much. <laughs> no, no, I, I understand. I understand that. So I, I don't want you to break any secret codes. Yeah. There. Let's see. You did have one thing, and actually ro- rolling back, Love Under New Management, the Mickey Howard story. You were mm-hmm. an additional still photographer on that in 2016. Yeah. I don't know if we mentioned that. No, no, no. So that was um, that was the first show that I had actually gotten to do um, stills for, uh, you know, on a professional feature film. I had done right. it for student films and all that, and I and I knew it was something that I was definitely interested in, and still kind of trying to find my place. Um, so, uh, yeah, I. Uh, you know, I, I uh, made a point to start bringing nice cameras to uh, the office because I was actually working as a production assistant in the office. Right. And I just started to bring in my cameras and I was just like, hey, if you guys need anybody to jump in for stills, you know, I, I am here. And I'm so I had a couple days. I think it was four days I was able to run out and get some get some shots. And, and that definitely um, helped me get um, on other shows for sure. You know, you have to have a portfolio. So it was great. Well, we are going to take a quick break for everyone out there. Uh, Just hang tight with us. We're going to come back with, we're going to change our hats here for director and writer. Yeah, we're getting the good stuff. And then we've got some further questions for our guest, Seth F. Johnson. Is F stand for fantastic? Yeah, there you go. The the F is to help people find me because there's so many Seth Johnsons out there. (laughs) Right. That was going to be my on air name. No. (laughs) So, anyway, we'll be right back in one second. So, just hold on. WRUU brings you the most diverse and passionate local radio programming on the air in Savannah. This all-volunteer and non-profit community radio station accepts no money from any form of government. Our diversity and independence is made possible only through the generous financial support of listeners like you. We rely on your annual and ongoing monthly contributions to cover the many costs associated with bringing you our broadcast and web programming. If you are a contributor, thank you. If you are not yet a contributor, please show your appreciation of the role WRUU plays in your life by becoming a contributor in any amount. You can donate quickly and easily by credit card or check. Just find the Donate and Subscribe links at WRUU.org. Thanks for listening to and supporting WRUU. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among young adults. Friends of those struggling with mental health issues can be incredibly influential in helping them get the help they need. Three out of four young adults will turn to a peer in a time of crisis for support. Equip yourself with the resources you need to help your friends, such as tutorial videos, warning signs, conversation starters, and more at seizetheawkward.org. 
And if you or someone you know is having thoughts of suicide, call the Georgia Crisis and Access Line at 1-800-715-4225. Tune in Saturdays at 3 p.m. to Muses, Memoirs, and More, your show about authors, artists, and entertainers with your host, Adam Messer. You're listening to WRUULP Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with global soul. And we are back with our guest, Seth F. Fantastic. Johnson. Yeah. Spike. How'd you get the name Spike? So or can you say? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. So Spike is one of those really silly names. Um, uh, when it's it's so stupid. Um, when I was a kid, I spiked my hair. I always was. I was one of those hair, hair gel brats of the '90s, and so uh, I, I was one in the '80s without the hair gel, okay. and I didn't do it successfully. But I thought I was cool. Yeah. Well, you know, I think I saw uh, maybe too much like Smash Mouth when I was a kid. So I know. <laughs> so, but, yeah. I don't have the rights to that, so I can't sing the song. Uh, yeah. But so funny. So that's where Spike came. Yeah, from. yeah, okay. and I, I love it. You know, it's it's always good to have a nickname. You know. Yeah, so. when I'm saying Spike, and I'm like. Uh, who's Spike? And then, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it, it's kind of split down the line, fifty fifty on set. You know, people um, he, people who hear the Spike that seems to always stick, and so I always hear Spike. Um, and then you know, I always hear Seth, and then you know, last thing I might hear is Stills. <laughs> stills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They wake up in the middle of the night hearing Stills. Stills. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. So funny. Do you ever get sick of your camera? No. <laughs> oh my gosh, no. I, ca- I, I don't I, get sick of my sound equipment. No, I I carry a camera. It's your baby. Right? I carry it with me everywhere. I I, I you know. Um, a funny thing that I do, which I'm, I'm sure probably a lot of people out there do this, is I, I tend to shoot digital during the week for work, and then I shoot film on weekends because right. it's fun, you know, and I can go crazy. So. And you can experiment more. It's, just for our audience real quick, the uninitiated, what's the difference? Can you break it down to the difference between your love for digital versus your love for film? Oh, yeah, film? Sh- sure, yeah. So, um, um I mean, I guess, you know, you got to be careful here. You have other photographers hear me. But, um, you know, I, I like, I guess I like shooting film just because uh, it's, a, it's always interesting kind of how it's going to turn out. And I like the, the aesthetic of it. I like the grain and I shoot a lot of black and white. And so I think it's really fun. Um, and then I like having a, having a limited number of shots, too. It's, it's, it's cool to go out maybe with just a roll of film, um, you know, and, and, and go, you know, on a, a little day trip or something. And get... Like if yeah, just what, like, 10, 12, whatever shots you get twenty four. Yeah. I don't yeah, know the shoot, number. shoot medium format, maybe ten or twelve. If you're shooting uh, thirty five millimeter, maybe twenty four or thirty six images. So yeah, it's uh, it's 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 just fun. I just enjoy it as a hobby. And then for digital, um, you know, like I had mentioned before, we're shooting um high volume photography. So I'm um, you know, and I'm on set, um, averaging right. maybe a couple thousand photos a day. I um, normally carry wow. at least two cameras with me at all times when I'm on set. One with a um, kind of a wider angle lens. And that one with the it looked like a, I can't even describe it. Yeah. it, it I, I'm not a camera guy. I'm a sound guy. So yeah. what was that thing on Galveston you had that looked like a monstrosity? Yeah. So it's like beautiful photos. So to, 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 you know, all of you listening in that probably haven't ever even heard of or seen one of these, it's, it's something called a sound blimp. And uh, it was uh, developed by uh, a photographer called Mark Jacobson. Um, and uh, what it is, is it's basically a giant soundproof case that we put our, um, our cameras in and then you're allowed, or you're able to take photographs on set while we're actually recording so it's actually um of course it's for the actors to not distract them but you know at the end of the day it's to not disturb the sound on set and and, and interfere with it so it's this big soundproof case and so that's what i yeah so you don't hear clicks or anything or snapping sounds or (laughs) we're actually you know um, more i'm sure we're getting away from that in the industry now with the kind of uh, mirrorless cameras because you can record directly to a a sensor and so you don't actually even have to have that that shutter that exposure it's kind of done in a different way and so it's completely silent so um the last show i did emperor i was completely mirrorless and so i actually didn't even have to carry that giant um sound blimp with me at all wow yeah it's cool all right we need to kind of go through these at a a steadier pace you've got seven credits for being a director um 2014 pierre la fox la 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 excuse Uh me i don't speak french well yeah yeah so uh so this was (laughs) that was a short yeah so what kind of happened with me um, my college career was kind of interesting 
I, uh, you know, I got accepted to SCAD and then I actually ended up getting a, uh, a big modeling contract and going to New York and I modeled for four years. Derek Zoolander? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So I actually, I did uh, seven New York fashion weeks. I don't know how many shows. It was really crazy. Um, and so when I came back, I had actually been doing um, all online classes at SCAD um, while I was living up in New York. And so when right. I came back, I only had my core um, film classes. That's basically all I had left. So it was a very, mm-hmm. very intense time to come back. And so that was actually the first film I had done um, coming back to SCAD. And it was this uh, silly little thing where we had a, um, a, a, f- a fake French hat maker. And at the end of the, the, the film, he gets a pie to the face. <laughs> of course, of course. We have, and we've got to move at a pretty okay, I'll big be more clip concise. here. So, because I've got some, some other questions <laughs> okay. I really want to get into okay, good, here. Good. And we're running out of time. Okay. Unfortunately, an hour goes by so quickly. I know it. In 2014, you did a documentary short. I love uh-huh. documentaries. Balloon Voyage. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, in one sentence, tell me about that. Yeah. Uh, uh, basically, we interviewed this um, uh, world champion air balloon uh, man here in Savannah. Awesome. He had he has three world records for air ballooning long distance and stuff. And so we we went out and flew with him. It was crazy. We crash landed twice. He wasn't piloting <laughs> us. <laughs> did you get pictures of the crash landing? We we have video of us almost awesome. uh, running into a home. <laughs> uh, don't tell the insurance company. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, 2016, One Traveler Too Many, another short. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that was the one I had mentioned earlier. That was the one that we did in uh, 1895. It was a okay. horse drawn carriage comedy. It's really, really fun. Okay. You had um, Timeless Innovation, another short in 2016. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this one was super cool. This was actually for um, uh, an architecture competition. Uh, my, my girlfriend, she works as a, a civil engineer. And so, you know, when you have a, an architect and you have a, uh, or, a, you know, um, an aspiring architect and a, and a filmmaker, we, we saw this competition that was geared for both. And so we went and we actually filled, filmed about the urban grid system in Savannah and, and why, you know, the layout of Savannah, why it makes it such a, a perfect urban friendly walkable city. City, so it's really cool. Yeah, the first planned city in in this country. Yeah, we actually were we were finalists um, uh, in that competition. We got like forty thousand votes or something for that. Amazing, was crazy. Amazing. Yeah, it was super cool. Death of a Dream, another short mm-hmm. in 2017. Yes, so that was the the sailing film that we had done, which actually just went as a, at a film festival a couple weeks ago. And uh, congrats. Yes, uh, we went we went. Um, uh, four hours out into the, the, the ocean, you know, in coastal, coastal Georgia here. And uh, we had 11 crew members. We had two sailors. And then we had three cast members, if I remember correctly. It was 11 crew. Wow. So it was a really tight group. And it was so much fun. Shooting on water. That's interesting. Yeah. We did a little, we faked a little bit of it. We shot like our night scenes on the dock. Um, yeah. And I was looking at some of the photos little. of that. It was yeah. actually quite nice. It was pretty, uh, interesting. It, pretty uh, physically taxing, I must say. And you're like, please don't drop the equipment. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. And you have another one um, Breaking the Silence from 2018. And a that short. Was, that was the visual poem. So that was that, the visual that's poem. We're, okay. We're, we're actually just kind of in post. We're in our final round of post. I can't wait one. to see that. Yeah. yeah. I love visual poetry. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be really and, fun. Um, Me too. It's it's so inspiring. It's so simple and just beautiful. Awesome. And as a director, pre-production on the short Soldier's Heart. Yes. Um, this is uh, really, really exciting. Um, and this will be the biggest thing that I've done to date for sure. Um, mm-hmm. We've got a lot of, uh, you know, industry professional professionals that are stepping in to work on this one. And actually, that's what we were doing today. Uh, before we were here is we were we were um, uh, getting some props. Um, and dodging thunderstorms. Yeah, exactly. So it's a, it's a Civil War film, uh, and or it's a post-Civil War film, actually. And, and what it's about is it's a... Uh, it's about um, PTSD during the Civil War. You know, they, they didn't really know exactly what it was. Um, right. They kind of thought maybe it was a heart condition and all these different things. So there's, there was a lot of misunderstanding about it. And so the the idea of the film, I guess, in its essence is it's a, it's, it's a, um, it's kind of to, to show that that is something that people have dealt with for a very long time and, and kind of recognize that it was happening during the Civil War. And, and uh, it's a film about healing. And so uh, we're actually going to be filming in uh, mid-October. And we've got a really um, amazing uh, um, cast and crew. And, you know, we're going location scouting tomorrow, picking up a whole bunch of authentic, you know, Civil War era props um, today from a really great props master that's here in town right now. And so... Uh, yeah, it's it's going to be very, very exciting. I cannot wait to see that thing. I'd love to see that when it comes out. Yeah, yeah. And quickly, on, on some of these we mentioned already, you were writers on Soldier's Heart, mm-hmm. Death of a Dream, mm-hmm. Timeless Innovation, One Traveler Too Many, Balloon Voyage, and Pierre Lafeu. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... So, yeah. Um, uh, What's it like being a writer and a director? So, I, I think I have kind of an interest. Well, I don't know if it's the most unique 
take on this in the world, but I, I actually, what I, I do is I always pretty much work with someone when I write. And so I'll come up with, uh, you know, I guess I'll have an idea and I'll start writing tons and tons of notes and maybe that'll last for a month or two where I'm writing a lot of notes and just mm-hmm. researching and things. And then I start thinking of, you know, scenes, you know, in my head and I, and I write those down and stuff. And then I try and to get it, I try and get it to as much of a kind of a semblance as I possibly can. And maybe I'll even write it out as like a short story or something like that. And then I always work with someone to actually adapt it into a screenplay. So I, I normally don't actually write any of them into um, a script. I always kind of work with a screenwriter and, and I think it's very helpful because it allows them to kind of work as a screenwriter and then also as like an editor for me and and they can go through and they say hey I don't think that this is making sense or you know maybe this is too too long too much let's slim it down and so I always kind of work in tandem with someone whenever I do my writing all right into um, some of our questions here yeah. we've we've taught and this is talking about unit stills photography okay. what's your best approach at taking photos of movie stars Oh, yeah. Um, so uh, you definitely want to introduce yourself. You know, you want to kind of let them know who it's like, you, who it's you like are. It's like miking a person. Yeah, exactly. In the sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to you wanna, um, introduce yourself and, and, and ask them, you know, what do they like? What don't they like? You know, how, how do they feel about it? And, you know, what can I do for them? You know, um, everybody has their preference. And, of course, you know. It's, Left side, right side or whatever. You know, sometimes, you know, a lot of times it won't get into, I guess, that specific. that specific. Unless it's something like I had mentioned before where it's kind of contract specific. Then I then okay. I definitely know beforehand for sure. But, yeah, you know, you just, just be friendly and, and you'd want to. You know, the main thing you want to do is you want to earn their trust. Um, you know, if they trust you, they'll they'll let you let you do what you need to do, and and you want to be a fly on the wall. You want to be one right. of the people in the room, and so if if you earn their you know their trust and their respect, they'll let you they'll let you get what you need. Have you ever had any actors that were reluctant to have their photos taken, or just? Yeah, nice, friendly. Sh- uh, you sure. don't mention names. Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't say names, yeah, but course. I, you know, I've had a couple that have been, um, I guess, yeah, uh, uh, difficult to work with. But then you, you know, maybe you go back and you watch the film and and you say, okay, well, you know, here's what they had going on in that scene or right. in those ten scenes. So you know, or that one scene they did sixteen times until they yeah. could get it just right. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. And so yeah, definitely. But you know, I, I don't take any of it personally. If if that's how they work, that's how they work, and and I just have to find a way to get my job done as well so what advice would you give to aspiring photographers that are trying to make it in the film industry trying to be a unit stills photographer or yeah um you know it's interesting because like i had said i did come from this from uh like having a a really strong interest in film but i guess also a really strong interest in photography kind of in tandem but i guess the what i always thought is maybe people coming from the world of journalism may kind of understand what we do very well just because you know it is kind of uh, there is an art to it but at the same time you are you know trying to to capture what's happening live you know you're trying to or you know it's a performance but it's happening live for us and so um, you know, you're you're trying to you're trying to capture those moments, um, and so maybe someone that's coming from, uh, you know, maybe like a press background might have a really mm-hmm. good uh, understanding of kind of what we're doing, and probably vice versa as well. What did you learn from your education at SCAD? Oh yeah, is that hard to narrow down? Because you probably learned a lot. Uh, you know, we did. It's yeah. definitely it's a you know it's there's a, when you're studying something like film and television, there's so many different spectrums to that. There's so many different things that that involves. Um, that you know you do take a lot of different classes and uh, it is very very intense. But oh my gosh, I loved it. Um, I, I really really um, you know SCAD is an amazing school, and I really really enjoyed the time that I was there. Um, and and I you know when I was there actually I did have kind of the same focus which was writing and directing and um, and then also I would always help out and take stills for any of my friends. But yeah, it's uh, I, I think I learned a lot. Um, they really you know help you identify your creativity and and help you find your own voice as uh, as an artist so yeah great great school your grandfather was a photographer mm-hmm. and your parents owned a photography business correct mm-hmm. yeah they they they, or, they still kind of work in photography and okay. yeah my granddad did as well yeah how did that inspire your love for photography oh yeah sure um so n- i don't think anybody necessarily pushed me in the direction of photography but now looking back on it it seems so obvious that film film and television and photography would become an interest of mine I, I can even remember when I was like eight years old my my science fair project was all on like the inner workings of the human eye and I was um, yeah and I was doing stuff with mirrors and 
we, I built a big giant eye ball and like yeah, yeah it was super cool. fun. That's cool. But yeah, um, when I uh, um, when I was eleven years old, I saw Lawrence of Arabia for the first time with Peter O'Toole, and mm-hmm. I have watched it every year since. It's, I make a point to watch it every single year, and uh, okay. Um, that's definitely what put me on the path of uh, exploring film and television. Um, it really was a spark. But then, f- it, personally, with my you know my father and my my uh, my grandfather, um, you know my my grandfather, you know he shot um, l- lots of slide photography, and I have all of his old cameras, and I I still shoot with them on weekends when I'm shooting that's my film. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, when I got into school, when I got into SCAD and I, 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 you know, I started having some questions, I mean, they were the go-to and of course they're a wealth of knowledge and had some equipment for me and really, yeah. Huge. And there's a love for the equipment. It's hard for me to let equipment go, it, uh-huh. you know, that's outdated and, and, uh, like vinyls come back. It kind of went away yeah. for a while. I really uh-huh. thought it was gone and wow, it's back. And, um, it's like your equipment is an extension of you. Like, this is your eye that yeah. you can focus yeah. in, in almost superhuman ways sure, to sure. to capture moments of time. You know, I'm I'm capturing sound. I'm capturing what it sounds like. You're capturing what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm sure you've taken many photos, and <laughs> some you might look back and say you can see your growth and your photography mm. skill. Yeah, for sure. And you can probably also see you might may see nuggets of things that you took, yeah. and you're like wow that was better than i thought it was or or Mm -hmm. at the time you didn't was there ever a situation like that oh yeah sure i mean i i think that uh, you know we are we all are are you know harshest critics and so sometimes i'll I'll think about uh some images or something like that like oh i wish i had done that or oh i wish i had done this but you know at the end of the day most people don't know what you were doing technically with it you know they're not going to know what lights you used or you know what, what exactly was happening and so if it's a good image it's a good image and you know People take amazing photos on their phones all the time. So, you know, you the just, technology is like yeah. <laughs> getting up there. It's, yeah. it's still not probably what. Oh, no. You way. Have. Nah, yeah, nah, you can't you, touch it. Can't touch the, it. The, the, the sensor on a cell phone is the size of your pinky nail. And, uh, you know, the, the, this is, you know, it, it's crazy. So. Yeah, that's a, a mammoth camera. We need a picture of the camera. That you have <laughs> yeah. and, uh, so, um, what happens in five years? Where do you see your career? Oh, gosh. Um, well, definitely. Um, I would love to do still photography for the rest of my life. Um, so I definitely, I, okay. I, I always want to do that. Um, always, always, always. But, you know, I do want to move more into um, kind of a, uh, a writer director role and uh, maybe, um, you know, we'll keep, keep doing what we're doing, you know, keep making short films, keep doing our own independent work, grow bigger, you know, this one, mm-hmm. um, we're getting some help with it. And so it's going to be an even bigger step for us and just keep p- taking those big steps and, um, yeah, eventually I want to, um, you know, do, um, you know, feature length, uh, directing and, 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 and make films at a, in a, on a large scale. Um, but always also stick with still photography because I, I love it. Okay. Well, we've got to wrap things up. It's been a cool. fascinating conversation and yeah. we've only scratched the surface. Sure, sure. Um, I want to thank you, Seth, for being here today. Yeah, um, thank you so much. Spike Zoolander. Um, no, <laughs> that's your new nickname now. Um, is there anything you want to discuss before we go real quick and anything? Um, yeah. I mean, you know, if you're, if you're interested in film and television, I'd say just definitely go for it. You know, it, it's, uh, you know, it's extremely, extremely gratifying to be able to, to, to do, you know, what you, uh, what you love and what you're interested in. And we all have that artist inside of us. And so you, you gotta, you gotta go after it, whatever it is, you know, you have to pursue that. And so, uh, follow that passion. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever totally. It is. Yeah. And don't, don't worry about, you know, don't worry about the, anything else. Don't worry about the circumstances. Just, you know, make it happen and, and it'll happen. Okay. Well, thank you, Seth F. Johnson. Yeah. For joining me today on Savannah on Film. Uh, Savannah on Film wants to feature film professionals at different levels. So if you're listening and you're in the film industry, I'd love to talk to you too. You can email me at savannahonfilm at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook at Savannah on Film. We're on Twitter and YouTube where you can catch these shows once we've recorded them and I've got them uploaded and make them look all fancy. So Savannah on Film is a voice for the Savannah film industry. And you have been listening to Savannah on Film with your host, Ed Susevich, on WRUU 107.5 FM, LP, Savannah Soundings. We are Community Radio with Global Soul. 
You have been listening to another episode of Savannah on Film, where we give a voice to the Savannah film community. Please like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter. This program was originally broadcast on 107.5 FM in Savannah, Georgia, and worldwide on www.wruu.org. Join us next time for more intriguing insights into the vibrant Savannah film community here at Savannah on Film.